Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and I got some great news. Blender 2.80 is one step tantalizingly closer. We've been waiting for four years for this. It is a massive update to Blender and I know a lot of you are excited about it and we are getting so close. So first off, this is mostly an informational video. I'm not going to a whole lot of depth, I'm mostly just going through the release notes and the readme and that kind of stuff. I will of course link all of those things if you want more details. And there's a very good reason why this is mostly an informational video. This is to tell you that Blender 2.80 release can candidate is out there. Now, if you're not really familiar with the, the, the naming conventions here, basically it normally goes like alpha, beta, release candidate, final release. And when you've got something like an alpha and beta, you're still like adding new features and functionality. By the time you get to release candidate, you're pretty much ready to go. This is a, a the name says it all. It is a candidate for releasing. So hopefully it will go out. There won't be any major black flags come up and they can just release it. And if that's the case, this notice right up here is the most important part. Blender 2.80 is almost ready. The stable release will be available in the coming days. So it all depends on how the release candidate kind of turns out. But what you could do right now is download what is basically the final version of Blender, hit on it a bit, make sure that the uh, final version is good to go. Now, again, if they do run into some major problems, you're going to expect a bit of a delay. And it is when that 2.8 of 2.80 final release comes that I will do a much more in-depth video about what is new in Blender 2.80. But instead, we're gonna do a quick overview looking at their uh, beta notes. So if you come to blender.org for slash download for slash releases for slash 2-80, don't worry, I'll link that, uh, you get this page. And one thing to note here is if you click this guy right here, uh, it looks like it's gonna be a download for the release candidate and, and this is gonna trick a couple of people up. So I just wanna make sure you know. If you click this guy right here, it will bring you to this page. This is just the download page for uh, oops, sorry, it'll bring you to this page. This is just the download page for Blender as it stands now. So if you go to Blender and click download, it brings you here. So don't click this button right here because then you'll just be downloading Blender 2.79. What you want to do is then come and click the try Blender 2.80 and ignore the fact it says beta. So this is a little confusing at this point in time, but you want to click that guy and then go in here and download the July 11th version. Then that is ultimately the release candidate. So there's a little bit of confusion going on there. I figured I would definitely point that out. So this doesn't bring you there. This just brings you to the normal download page, then you gotta click the beta and download the newest version. So just do be aware. So if it looks a lot like you got the old version, well, you probably got the old version. And also the uh, beta pages are really slow. It, it took me about 25 minutes to download the thing. So I uh, expect it to download at like 200, 300 kilobytes per second as more people are using it. Uh, the main downloads are much, much faster, but the beta stuff or the release candidate stuff is very slow. All right, so a bit of an overview of what to expect in Blender 2.8. Now, first off, this one is very profound. This is a nice image, illustrates it perfectly. There is an updated user experience. So here is Blender 2.79, 2.8, 79, 8. Now, I can get easily distracted and do this all day, but as you will see, there is quite a refinement to the UI. And it goes beyond that, actually. There's a number of things here, like new toolbars that will automatically collapse down or expand out. Uh, so if you've got a lot of screen real estate, you can actually have this more expressive or full text if you want, or you can collapse it down to this minimal icon set, which works very, very well for uh, a constrained screen. If you're on a 13 inch screen or something, Blender is much nicer to use. You'll also notice you've got things like uh, your widgets here for switching between views instead of no longer really requiring a number pad, which essentially Blender really did before to be productive. Now you can still control things using the number pad if you so wish, but you've also got these on-screen options. And this is also really nice. These things here make it so that you can use this on something like a Surface tablet, and it works quite nice with touch controls as well. Uh, refinement over here, you've got multiple view, like you can, it can expand and contrast into multiple views if you, or multiple columns, sorry, if you have the, the real estate for it. And it's just a general updated look and flow and control structure for everything in the editor. Definitely nice there. We've also got improvements across the road for the workspace. Uh, layers are gone, replaced with collections. Uh, we've got new sculpting tools, new modeling tools and layout, and new animation setup and editing, compositing stuff. It's just across the board, the UI has been refined and improved that you will see in all aspects of it. We've also got new functionality um, in terms of uh, the viewport functionality. We're gonna get more into EV in just a second. We see we also got 
a random color setup. We've got a colored wireframe and it doesn't kill your computer like it used to on the older versions of Blender. And you have look dev. On top of that, we have new gizmos here for manipulating in the scene. So you see nice sort of rotation controls there. We've got the new toolbars that you saw just a second with all new icons, all their contextual based off of what you're currently working on. And then the star of the show, at least in my humble opinion, is Eevee. Eevee is a new physically based real time renderer. So basically you can work on your scene and have it look pretty much picture perfect to what it will look like when exported out to a game engine or much more accurate if you're ultimately going to be rendering it in the end. It gives you real time amazing functionalities. You've got things like volumetric uh, screen space reflections and refractions, subsurface scattering, soft and contact shadows, depth of field, camera motion blur and bloom. And we were again talking real time. It also uses the same rendering system as cycles. On top of that, there is the uh, principal BSDF node and this is compatible with the shading model used in most game engines. So it means exporting out to a shader based node graph game engine like Unreal, Unity and so on is a heck of a lot easier using Blender 2.80. And then we've got new 2D animation tools such as Grease Pencil. Grease Pencil has always been there. It's mostly used for doing markups, you know, for drawing on top of things, quick notes and memos kind of stuff. Now it is a full blown 2D animation drawing system. It's pretty amazing. You've got new uh, brush tools uh, for strokes and so on. You can edit them, weight paint similar to meshes. Plus you've got a number of modifiers that can be used uh, on your strokes, things such as erase, subdivide, armature deforms, uh, rendering effects like blur shadows or rim lighting are all available. And then of course, Cycles got all kinds of love as well. So Cycles now provides industry standard functionality such as crypto mat, BSDF hair, volume shading, random walk, uh, subsurface scattering, rendering optimizations, including CPU and GPU rendering, much improved OpenCL, start and render times, CUDA support, uh, and so on. So definitely a lot of improvements on the rendering side. And that is the top level features, but that is just the beginning. So as you can see, we've got a ton of new features of functionality, new tablet options. Uh, we got the new pop-up UI stuff, GLTF support in there, and Collada support has been improved. Both are huge for game developers. They implemented uh, Pixar's open subdiv, multi-object editing. It just goes on and on and on the Blender 2.80 release is massive. Um, so definitely check it out. Do download. They've got a number of scenes that you can check it out with. Uh, on top of that, they also have the full release notes in beta form. So the, I don't know that these are 100% complete, but they are really in-depth. So I will link these as well. These are the release notes for this particular release. So you can get into more details of what's here. And you drill into a subject. For example, if I drill into the cycles category, we get a lot more depth. So here you can see how to create Kuna Reeves in your your own game. Um, we got all the new shaders or you know, a little bit more detail about all of them. Generally, there is more drill down information about each new feature as well. So you could spend a couple of hours just going through the release notes. There is just so much in this release. So again, it is not 100% done yet. We are not at the end, but we are very, very, very close to the end. Assuming this release candidate goes just fine, uh, the release should be any day now. And when that comes, I'll do a much more hands-on video with Blender 2.80 showcasing some of this new functionality in action, especially from the perspective of game developers, which the majority of you are. But this is a, a definitely a release that has me excited. I'm wondering about you guys as well. Are you gonna be checking out the release candidate? I do recommend as many people do, so so that they can get as much feedback as possible to make the final release as bulletproof as possible. Or you can just wait a few days, hopefully everything goes well, knock on wood, and the, the final release should come maybe in a week, maybe in a couple of days. Who knows, but it is so close. So that's it, uh, that is the release candidate. All the links we looked at are going to be down below if you want more details. I'd love to hear what you are most excited about. For me, hands down, it's the new interface in EV uh, and the new export tools like GLTF and um, the new Collada support. It makes working with other game engines just so much nicer. First off, you can, you'll can you be working with what you actually see because of EV, so uh, that's definitely nice. There's not really that whole, okay, well it looks like this in this game, in, in Blender, but it looks like this in the game engine, plus the better exporting tools, you're actually going to get the results that you started with, including that principal BSDF shader. So your shader results are also going to be the same when you export out. Should just make game development a much more pleasant experience with Blender in general. Uh, so I, I'm definitely excited about Blender 2.80 and interested to hear what you guys think as well. All right, that's it for now. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.